1896, Henri Becquerel was professor of physics uh, in Paris. And one of his particular interests was phosphorescence, that is, materials which will continue to glow in the dark for hours after they've been illuminated by bright sunlight, and that's what we call phosphorescence. Uh, he was lucky in that he had a large collection of phosphorescent uh, materials, bits of rock and other things that exhibited this property, because he'd inherited these from his father and grandfather, who were both professors interested in the same subject. And then on the 20th of January in 1896, Becquerel went along to one of uh, the regular Paris meetings where people were talking about the latest research. And the speaker there told them uh, how in Germany, Wilhelm Röntgen, only three weeks before, had discovered the phen phenomena of X-rays, invisible radiation, which would pass through dark objects like paper and would uh, uh, blacken uh, photographic film. Now, uh, Rontgen had discovered x-rays from a, an electric discharge tube where he'd taken an evacuated tube, applied a voltage across it and found that one end of the tube glowed brightly and also produced these invisible radiation which would uh, pass through paper and blackened film. And those were called x-rays because their nature was not uh, understood. So Becquerel was interested in this because he thought this glow from the discharge tube sounded rather like the phosphorescence that he was interested in. So he went back to his laboratory and during February he conducted several experiments with phosphorescent minerals. Now I haven't got any real phosphorescent minerals here but this little lump of rock will have to serve as an illustration of what he did. For a typical experiment he would take um, a photographic film. Well in those days it wasn't even film, it was glass plates. These are the sort of glass plates that they used. Um, these are period uh, plates which I'm lucky enough to have um, uh, inherited from my grandfather. Um, and what he would do is to take one of these in the dark room where it would not be exposed to light. And in the dark um, he would wrap it up with uh, black paper to keep the light out. And then he would bring it out into his laboratory. And there he would put it with one of these phosphorescent materials um, on top of it and wait for the sun to illuminate it. I don't have any sun here, so this lamp would have to make do and pretend that's the sun. So it would uh, be illuminated and then continue to glow for several hours afterwards when it went into the dark. And uh, Becquerel was familiar with this, but he wondered whether it also produced these invisible x-rays which would have blackened the film. So he took that into his dark room and there, in the dark, he unwrapped it carefully and put it in, into his development tank where he would add the chemicals and develop it. And when he took it out, he was interested to see that it did indeed produce a blackening of the film. You can see there there's a black patch corresponding to where the phosphorescent material had been. So he thought this is indeed just the same as Röntgen's x-rays, it's invisible radiation emanating from these phosphorescent materials. So on the 24th of February, he went along to the meeting of the Academy of Sciences in Paris and reported that certain minerals, certain salts of uranium, were particularly active in this respect and produced quite a lot of blackening on these photographic plates. So that was an interesting discovery, but he continued to work on that. And on the uh, 26th of February, he prepared another experiment, similar, uh, so he took again another of his photographic plates wrapped it up in black paper and put it there waiting um, for the sun. But unfortunately that day in Paris it was rather cloudy, there was no sun, so we didn't get any exposure to sunlight, it didn't phosphoresce. So he thought that's a bit of a waste of time and he just put it away in the drawer. A few days later, on the 1st of March, which happened to be a Sunday, showing what a keen researcher he was, he came back to the laboratory and thought, what am I going to do today? And he thought, I remember that one I left in the drawer, I wonder what I'm going to do about that. It hasn't been exposed to sunlight, so there won't be any phosphorescence, so there's nothing there of interest. But he thought he'd develop it anyway. So he took it into his um, dark room, put it into the developing tank, and developed it, and found that indeed, surprisingly, there was uh, something just as black as the 
original. So um, it didn't need the sunlight, it didn't need the phosphorescence. It was coincidental that these materials phosphoresced. Um, what they were doing was giving off something else completely different to Rodgen's X-rays, and so it became known as Becquerel rays. So that was on the Sunday he discovered that. The very next day, the Monday, the 2nd of March, he went along to a meeting of the Academy of Sciences and presented his new findings um, uh, to the society then. Within 10 days, he'd written up the work and had it published as a, a printed paper. And by the end of the year, he'd published five more papers on the subject. So you can see in those days, the speed of research was certainly a lot faster than it is nowadays.